2018, everybody was hyped up. It was all about RTX. But just a little while and we got disappointed because of the game's release since then, claiming that they are applying ray tracing. But we found out that they just applied it for some features like reflection, GI, or shadows. But you can't combine two together. For us architects, we just need a render engine that has full ray tracing that can do one frame per second. So let's find out if RTX is a lie or a... Goodbye! It's a shame not to mention Unreal Engine when we mention RTX because Unreal Engine is the first to apply RTX in it. So let's launch Unreal Engine 5 Early Access because it has a very good surprise, which is Lumen. Lumen is a technology that uses ray tracing, but without RTX, you can use it on AMD. It doesn't require, as far as I know, a special architecture like we have in RTX. So here it is. We have the Unreal Project Browser and we will start with a blank project and we will turn on ray tracing. For some reason, if, in, if you didn't turn on ray tracing, you will just don't have the post tracing option that we will see in just a while. But before we get inside, let me show you the scenes that we will import and what to do before importing from Blender. We will export this scene in FBX format because it was the best with me till now uh, that handles the materials uh, pretty good, not so well, but yeah, in, in fair condition. But in the other hand, let me tell you some points before exporting this file. First of all, forget about the lights that you have in the scene. You won't see it in Unreal Engine. It is the best to have all the materials in principled uh, shader node. Also, don't use procedural materials like this one. Let's change this to something that Unreal Engine likes. You have two solutions. The first solution, which I prefer, is that you find a um, texture that doesn't require baking. And the other solution is to bake this, so you can have the same look inside Unreal Engine. Let's take an example. Here is the couch or sofa or whatever you call it. And we have nodes. If you have this, you have to remove it, even if you like this color. <laughs> Um, I think that's not, not much of a difference, but okay. And uh, just remove mixed shaders. This won't work. You'll have to remove it also. And here you go. You have your material ready. Just an image texture attached to whatever you attach it here. It will work in Unreal Engine. Otherwise, you won't find this texture. And it is preferred to have it in the UVW map by default. If you have multiple UV channels, it will be used for light mapping, which is classic. It will be deprecated, of course, after applying Lumen. Here is a good example of what a material that is almost ready in Unreal Engine. All you need to do is just to tweak some settings that you might not need to do it. So Control Shift T and to go for BBR library that I have downloaded from CC Zero Texture. I downloaded some textures from there. Amazing uh, website, by the way. Let's apply a floor. Here it is. I think this one looks great. And here it is. This is the scene in Eevee. Eevee has really impressive capabilities of doing uh, magnificent renders within seconds. It is not GI or ray traced. It is baked. If I remove the baking, you will find a very ugly looking scene. It is not even close to realism. It will look like this, really ugly, because you don't have any effect on this wall or whatsoever. Quite different. How this will look like in Unreal Engine? Let's create a new project and see what we have. Okay, here is the scene being started. It looks empty, of course, because it's blank. Let's go to the content drawer by pressing Ctrl space. The new interface is quite astonishing, I really love it. I think that uh, Q 
keep things organized, we will go to starter content and uh, make a new folder for our model. We will call it main model, like this. You have to insert underscore, not spaces in um, Unreal Engine uh, for programming purposes. And uh, here it is. We have the main model uh, folder opened and we will go for this and uh, drag and drop our FBX inside. Let's wait for it. Before we get into it, uh, just uncheck a skeletal mesh. When we check skeletal mesh, if we have like a cloth simulation uh, of a curtain, you can check this box on. So we have our animation inside if you are importing Alembic, for example. Uh, but for skeletons, characters and all that stuff, you need to uh, turn on the skeletal mesh. But as soon as you deactivate the skeletal mesh, you will find build nanite. And nanite is a new feature that has um, impressive capability of holding millions of polygons for millions of copies with no problem. It is like a V-Ray proxy if we are going to translate that in a quite weird way anyway. So um, it has a technology of geometry, virtualization and all that stuff to keep your scene uh, stable and uh, it doesn't uh, struggle a lot in games uh, for us it, we, we don't need it for now so we will import all or import just as a single file because it's just one uh, so they are having the same settings but if you have multiple files with different uh, settings you just uh, click import and wait for the other file to be imported okay that's it so we will import all and wait for it Okay, and as usual, you see the message of FBX that has really freaking things. We will open our asset drawer and get the static meshes inside. And as you can see that our scene is being distributed to multiple static meshes with the blue tag. To filter them out, you can um, just choose this static meshes and you will have all your meshes appearing and import them by just dragging them in and you have your scene ready we can even remove this and we have all everything really looking dark for now but that's easy we need to set a glass material for this one so we will go for its material here you can see it in green tag and click on this and search for glass because there is a ready-made glass here so we will have this also. Look how beautiful it is by just doing some few clicks and you have your scene almost ready. It looks quite fantastic, but I really don't like the auto exposure that happens because it, uh, it washes out the scene too much. So we will go for the post volume and uh, we will go for the exposure. I think it is here, yeah. And then keep it manual. Yeah, that looks quite nice. If we put a light, for example, if we created a light source, a uh, point light, for example, and uh, bring it in, uh, you will find if I just make it more stronger, distance field shadows, just to keep it softer, and uh, go for the light and increase the power, and you will find that the flickering is going away. Especially for outdoors, you won't notice any flicker. But uh, uh, GI is all about interiors, and as you can see, the scene looks magnificent. Uh, to make sure that you are using your RTX card, you will go to settings, the project settings, and then go for Lumen here, and take this. You will use your RTX card, and it will be more efficient. If you want to compare it with a realistic rendering, you can go for Lit, and you will find Post Tracing. Post Tracing is the actual look of your scene but in rendering mode is post tracing it is like cycles uh, in blender for example but when we keep it lit it is like eevee but this is <laughs> way better than eevee because it has interactive uh, you know gi uh, there is an add-on called the ssgi in um, blender but it isn't uh, you know it is like a hack, it is not an actual SSGI, but here it seems to be quite promising. I'm really waiting for the official release of Unreal Engine 5. But until then, we will have a check for another program that is called D5 Render. 